Let's see. The LLC his mouth will take so the, tender, the lease, so not as so cautious. That if so we don't feel like he's got a beer. That's a good thing. And so, thank you for that. Is your microphone on? I'd like to call this meeting to order. It's April the 6th. You're, you're good. We'll begin uh, by verifying that Super Johnson, Supervisor Johnson is on the phone. I'm here, Madam Chair. Okay. Thank you, Supervisor Johnson. Okay, we'll start with the invocation by the Clerk of the Board and then followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunity granted to us to come together for this meeting today. We send out our thoughts and prayers to everyone affected by the coronavirus outbreak and ask that you watch over and keep our residents, employees, families, and friends safe and healthy. We ask that you help us all come together with a deep respect for one another's thoughts and ideas while giving us great vision and enthusiasm for our work and bless the efforts of our board to provide our great county with the best policies, practices, and services we have to offer. We ask these things in your name. Amen. 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 Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, I pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <laughs> The Board of Supervisors may by motion recess into executive session to receive legal advice from the Board's attorney on any item contained in this agenda pursuant to ARS 38-431-03-A3 and 4. I'll entertain a motion and action to call for an executive session to be held May the 4th at 9 a.m. for discussion and consultation with legal counsel in accordance with ARS 38-431-03-A3 and 4. Discuss items noticed on the agenda with an asterisk. So moved. Second. A motion to second. All those in favor say aye. 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 <coughs> Any opposed? Motion carries. We entertain a motion and action to approve waiving the reading in full of items presented for discussion, adoption, or approval at this meeting. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes. Okay, going on to the official business to come before the board. Uh, number one, discussion or pending contemplated litigation claims and demands. Attorney Ryan, do you have anything for us? <clears throat> Nothing to report to the board, thank you. Okay, thank you. Next item is committee and or legislative reports. I'll start with Supervisor Johnson. Thank you, Madam Chair. We had a conference call webinar of the Western Regional Partnership on March 25th. The WRP is going to drill down and work on water issues and water security in the region during the 2020 calendar year. This meeting did not get into details, but essentially served as an introduction to the subject and the players. Quad State, uh, all right, it, uh, attended. I was that was through us. One aspect of the meeting which Quad Street raised and they acknowledged was not let go of last year's theme, the Endangered Species Act, and the programs related to desert tortoise, yellow-bill cuckoo, and other species as they relate to military training missions on their basis. Those discussions left a number of to-do lists, which included Department of Defense undertaking mitigation outside of bases so as to gain protection of take inside bases for military operations. This included land acquisition, fencing, habitat, et cetera. We requested that they, the RP, move on to a new intense topic, that they, the Department of Defense, address what's being done and planned on last year's topic. There was general support for doing this. One item of substance to come out of the discussion and roundtable was that New Mexico is studying water reuse from the shale oil operations the state has passed a Produced Water Act, which provides for cleaning water produced from the wells for reuse instead of just re-injecting it. These sessions always cover DOD collaborating with federal, state, and tribal governments, but largely ignores local governments. 
at least by generally titling of topics and themes, even though many programs uh, which involve land acquisition have direct local government impact. Uh, also, I have submitted a report on the Lower Colorado River Multi-Species Conservation Program to Clerk Anderson, and she will get it to you. That's all, Madam Chair. Thank you, Supervisor Johnson. Supervisor Gold, do you have anything? None today, ma'am. Okay, Supervisor Angus. Thank you, Madam Chair. I have two things. One, um, the EBT, the Employee Benefit Trust, met last week, and uh, I'm sure we're going to get a more in-depth presentation probably at the next meeting from Erin Collins, which we usually do every year. Um, but the most important piece that I think everybody will be relieved about is that the trust itself is, is in very, very good shape. We were told that with the coronavirus, in worst case scenarios, and we are solvent and in good shape for at least two years. And that's worst case. So uh, I want to thank everybody for working so hard. We had a big update about our wellness programs. We heard from vendors. We made some decisions about uh, different benefits. Some we decided to do, some we decided not to do. But again, we'll hear more about that. And I want to thank the, the EBT trust members for all coming out during a, a pretty tenuous time. <clears throat> and of course, our staff and Erin Collins' company. Also, the LPC, the legislative um, <clears throat> branch of our CSA met, and a little report on that. Last week, the legislature ended its first week of a complete shutdown amidst the ongoing COVID-19 crisis. The week before, the legislature passed a bare-bones budget and took a three-week break, announcing its intentions to return on April 13th. However, this was before the announcement by President Trump calling for 30 days to slow the spread and Governor Ducey asking Arizonans to stay home, stay healthy, stay connected. Both recommend you continuing social distancing efforts through the end of April. The legislature has not directly addressed the extension, but it is assumed that the legislature will need to extend the current break until at least the end of April. Until then, it is CSA's understanding that the legislature will continue to have regular discussions telephonically and through email. Just a few quick little pieces of legislation that we are watching. Um, the Arizona County Treasurer's Association announced its intention to request an extension of the existing delinquency date for the second half of payments on the 2019 property tax bills from May 1st until June 1st. There are the pros and cons. There are concerns that the proposal creates potential cash flow disruptions for multiple public entities, including schools, fire districts, counties, and community college, and, um, <clears throat> and some of the distribution. So we'll be watching that. Uh, the next one is an all-male election. ACO has been reaching out to both the legislature and the governor's office, encouraging an all-male ballot for the primary. Secretary of State's office has reached out to Arizona tribal nations to work on establishing MOUs. And CSA will be reaching out to counties individually for their position on allowing an all-male election for the primary. So I, I think that's something that we're gonna be discussing in the weeks ahead. Uh, federal actions, um, we received an overview of the estimated CARES Act aid that will be available to the state of Arizona. The Joint Legislative Budget Committee, JLBC, estimates 4.2 billion, that includes direct aid through the 2.8 billion to Arizona from the Coronavirus Relief Fund. K-12 K funding, food, housing, and elderly assistance programs, transit infrastructure grants, and more. Uh, the National Association of Counties, NACO, provided analysis on the legislation um, that uh, I'll make available. I'll put it into the record. Federal agencies will establish rules and guidance on the legislation over the next week or two, and staff will continue, that CSA staff will continue to work with NACO and work with federal partners to gain additional details on the rollout of aid. That's it, thank you. Okay, Supervisor Watson. Thank you, <clears throat> Chairman Bishop. I have no report this morning. Okay. Um, I really don't have a report either. All of my meetings have been by telephone. Uh, the County Supervisors Association met by phone, and then all the COVID-19 calls that have been going back and forth with federal, state, and, and local officials. So we'll go on now to the County Manager's report. Do you have anything for us? Madam Chairman, I have no report today. Thank you. Okay. 
So I'll entertain a motion for the approval of the March 2nd, 2020 Board of Supervisors meeting minutes. Shall I move? Second. Motion second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. Going on to the call to the public, which is going to be a little bit different today. The in-person call to the public portion of the Mojave County Board of Supervisors meetings has been suspended for the time being. However, comments can be submitted to the clerk of the board no later than 5 p.m. on Friday prior to the board meeting. And uh, written comments received will be read into the record by the clerk of the board, Ms. Jenny Anderson. So, uh, Jenny, do we have any call to the public? Madam Chair, yes, we do. Um, before I start, I also would like to mention um, for the public, I did have some that submitted uh, request to speak forms for um, a couple of the actual items on the agenda. I have given those requests to speak to the chairman mm -hmm. for later on in the meeting. Um, I do have four calls to the public, so. Okay, thank you. Um, the first one was received from Chris Many gauze, sorry if I butchered your name in the process. Um, he writes, prices of gas in Mojave County. There is no reason that gas in Mojave County is so high in April. Phoenix is currently under $2 per gallon, but Lake Havasu on April 1st, still the cheapest gas is two forty-five. dollars Not cool at all. The second request um, came from Ken in Golden Valley. I would just like to say thank you to each one of you on the board. You guys are doing an awesome job for Mojave County. Keep up the good work. Thank you. The third request came from Linda Olson from Kingman. She writes, I am writing regarding Mojave County Fair Association. The MCFA to whom you lease the county fairgrounds has been operating with an illegitimate board of directors since January. The MCFA board is operating with three non-elected board members and a chairman who by their own bylaws was ineligible to be a member of the MCFA since September 27th of 2019 when she moved her voter registration to Coconino County according to Mojave County recorder Christy Blair. February 3rd, you passed a new two-year lease with the MCFA, but who signed the lease on behalf of the MCFA? Illegitimate Chairman Ald. If Ald signed the lease, it would be invalid. MCFA has yet to pass a 2020 budget and operated in 2019 without an approved budget. I am hoping that you will read this call to the public into the record and ask the county attorney or county manager to look into these issues and the management of our county fairgrounds. Thank you. And the last request to speak came from Cliff Angle. And it reads, my name is Cliff Angle. I am a resident and registered voter of Mojave County and a member of the Mojave County Fair Association. At the last Board of Supervisors meeting, several concerned citizens made statements to this board regarding the Mojave County Fair Association Board and its illegal activities. Since call to the public is limited only to three minutes, not everything could be brought forward at the last meeting. You will recall from the last meeting that the Mojave County Fair Association Board Chairperson made herself ineligible to hold that office when she removed herself from the Mojave County County Mojave County voter registration rolls on September 27th, 2019. She notified the Fair Association board members at their October meeting that it was her intention to resign in January at the annual membership meeting, despite the fact that at that meeting in October, she was already ineligible to even be a member of the association at all. She communicated to the board members later that week that since her house in Williams wasn't going to be finished in time, she was not going to resign her position after all. She therefore knowingly continued to act as the illegal chairperson of the Mojave County Fair Association. You have heard previously that she conducted the annual membership meeting in January as the illegal chair and proclaimed three candidates elected to fill vacancies, despite the facts that there were four candidates who had submitted paperwork to run and that there were, was no actual vote, as required by the association's bylaws. Further acts by the illegal chair include numerous violations of parliamentary procedure and member 
due process. I asked before, why should you care? This board has entered into a new lease agreement effective April 1 with the Mojave County Fair Association, an organization that is currently being chaired by a non-member and has repeatedly refused to provide budgets and other financial documents to the membership. Is this lease even legal? If it was signed by Ramona Ald as the representative for the Mojave County Fair Association who has been acting as the legal chairperson since last September 27th, perhaps it is not. Regardless, your current lease gives you the authority to audit their financial records. Has the county manager or the county finance director ever looked into where money is being spent and why things like restrooms flooding during events continues to go on uncorrected? Your name, Mojave County, is on the fairgrounds facility, property that is owned by the citizens of Mojave County. It is my sincere hope that you care enough about what goes on there to direct staff to look further into this mismanagement and illegal acts of the Mojave County Fair Association Board, its illegal chair, and its on-site representatives and take the appropriate corrective actions. Thank you. Okay. Madam Chair. Thank you, Jenny. Uh, Supervisor Johnson. Don't we have the county attorney already looking into this? Uh, yes, we do. It was brought up at the last meeting. I believe uh, the same comments that were made this morning were made last meeting. So thank you for pointing that out, though. Okay, we'll now go on to the proclamation. Uh, we'll be approving a proclamation declaring the month of April as Fair Housing Month in Mojave County. Um, I don't have a copy of the proclamation. Um, so moved. Oh, I see the clerk of the board has a has a copy, so. No, I don't. No. Oh, you don't? Okay. okay. Well, so moved. Okay. I'll second the motion. I have a motion and second. All those in favor, say aye. 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 <clears throat> Any opposed? Okay. Proclamation is accepted. We'll now go on to the Board of the Supervisors Consent Agenda. The following items listed under the Consent Agenda will be considered as a group and acted upon by one motion with no separate discussion of said items unless a board member so requests. Supervisor Johnson, do you have anything you'd like to pull? 46. Okay, confirming that was 40, 36. I'm sorry, can you say that again? I'm sorry, it's 27. 27. Okay. Supervisor Gold, do you have anything? Thank you, Madam Chairman. Um, number five and number 14. Okay, Supervisor Angus? None. And Supervisor Watson? None, thank you, Chairman. Okay, and the one I was gonna poll has already been polled, so. I'll entertain a motion. Madam Chair, I move that we approve consent agenda items one through 34 minus 5, 14, and 27. <clears throat> second the motion. Yeah, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, motion carries. So we'll uh, go back to item number five that was pulled by Ron Gold. Recommend approval of an application for a special event license for Meadview Area Chamber of Commerce. Thank you, Madam Chairman. I'm just concerned that if this event has more than 10 people, um, should it be approved conditional that the social distancing um, recommendations were to remain in effect, would it then be canceled? I think that's probably an excellent idea. And Madam, Madam Chair, sorry to interrupt. Um, also, just so you guys know, I know that the board talked about not approving these for a certain period of time. However, if they are brought to my office, I do have a duty to bring them to you, which is why it is on there. Okay, any further discussion? You wanna make that in the form of a motion? I will make that attempt. Um, I move that item agenda five be adopted with the condition that it be um, recommendations. That's weird. I, I joined the I'm sorry, Supervisor Gold. Just 
really briefly before you make your motion. Um, keep in mind that our recommendation is just solely a recommendation that the actual liquor license comes from the Department of Liquor License and Control. So what we do as a board is recommend, yes, we want approval or no, we don't want approval, but we have no control over the license itself, whether it is issued or not issued, that comes from the state. Hmm. So just, just so that you're aware of how that process works. Statutorily, they come before our board for a recommendation of approval or non-approval, but ultimately the state makes the final decision and issues the license. Thank you. Sorry. Um, Madam Chairman, I move that item five be adopted. So moved. Second. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Um, uh, discussion. The motion was to have this item approved, but not on any condition, right? You'll leave that to the state. Is that what you're saying? Madam Chairman, correct. Since we have, we if they they can't hold the event unless they get the liquor license, and we can't hold our approval conditional. So it'll then be up to the to the state whether or not that they held their event. <laughs> Chairman, Chairman Bishop, um, and I'm not aware right now if the state is approving these or not approving these based on, you know, some of the governor's directives, but um, ultimately that is up to them. Okay, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, motion passes. Next item will be 14, pulled by Supervisor Gold. We approve the fiscal year 20 increase in federal non-cash assistance revenue and private pay insurance revenue in the amount of 278,000 for the grant funded Mojave County Department of Public Health Immunization Program. Supervisor Gold. Thank you, Madam Chairman. I just had a question for the uh, Public Health Director and my question was, um, is, it says all children and I wanted to make sure that it was regardless of the income of their parents. Good morning, Good morning, Madam Chair, Denise. members of the board, Supervisor Gould. Um, I do believe that the VFC program is reserved for all children, regardless of income. Thank you, ma'am. But I will verify that for you just to be certain that I have correct information, okay? Thank you, ma'am. Madam Chairman. Supervisor Gould. I move that uh, agenda item 14 be adopted. Okay, do we have a second? I'll second the motion. I have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, motion carries. Item number 27, pulled by Supervisor Johnson. Approve fiscal year 2020 budget transfers from personnel to operation expenses between constable accounts. Supervisor, Gold, or Supervisor Johnson, go ahead. <laughs> Are you there, Madam Chair? left the conference. Yes, Supervisor Johnson, go ahead. Uh, I pulled this item. I don't really like the idea that we're coming so close to the end of the budget year when we're starting to do transfers, especially between departments. I don't think that's a proper way to do it. I think an item like this should go through, and then if there are over expenditures, they come back to the board so that the board can cover those expenditures so we know an actual accounting of our numbers. That was that to start the discussion. <laughs> okay, thank you, Supervisor Johnson. Uh, Supervisor Watson. Yes, I have a question for uh, Ms. Lloyd, <clears throat> she would. Chris Ballard and Scott Holtry has joined the conference. Um, <clears throat> thank you, Ms. Lloyd. In this transfer <clears throat> from personnel to operation expenses between constable accounts, is that from an expenditure anticipation made by another constable? Or is it for all constable operations? Good morning, board members and Supervisor Watson. In direct answer to your question, this is actually um, where we budgeted in the personnel expenses of the Serbet Constable 
for a whole rate for the um, retirement system. And yet we only have to pay the legacy rate on the elected officials retirement because we're paying into the ASRS. So there's about a $6,800 savings in that. That uh, the constables would like to utilize that difference between each of their budgets, particularly in their travel allocations. Okay, thank you for the clarification. Okay, Ms. Lloyd, can, can you um, explain or tell us which constables are um, are financially strapped now that need this extra money put into their accounts and and uh, maybe why? Yes, I would be. I'd be happy to do that. So the information um, provided by the constables during our recent meeting with them that the. Bullhead City Constable would be in excess of their travel budget by $1,349. By the end of the year, that was what was projected. North Canyon would be overexpended in travel by $750. Um, the Kingman Constable would be overexpended in travel by $685. Lake Havasu would be overexpended by 3025 in the travel line item. Wow. And Surbat would be overexpended by $2,470 in the travel line item. And in a few of the other line items, um, in the other constable's budget, there were a few little amounts. For example, we're projecting that the workers' compensation rate would be over under the bullhead by $57. So there's some smaller amounts um, of inefficiencies that would be, we would arrive at by the end of the year very likely, but most of this is due to the travel line item. So I assume there was an injury with the bullhead city constable? That Pardon me? The Bullhead City Constable, uh, was there an injury to cause his workman's comp to? Yes, a very slight in increase. And it may be because of the accrual um, and the reversal that we do for the payroll, if you will, that lags at the end of the fiscal year. Okay, and? And it, and it wasn't just his, I mean, it was also Kingman's, um, we're projecting to be over by the same $57 in that line item. Um, do you want to go ahead and go through some of some of those lists, the other items then? No, I, I okay. I don't particularly before okay. you move off of care travel. to, but does Supervisor Gold go ahead? Thank you, Madam Chairman. Coral, when we're talking travel, are we talking about their mileage as they go through their day-to-day -day, uh, duties, or are we talking about traveling to conferences and things like that? Supervisor Gould, your first. Um, response was correct. It's generally because of their day-to-day -day operations. And um, what the constables described was that they are um, backing each other up for certain types of writs. So for example, a writs of eviction, if they perceive that to be dangerous um, in one area, then there may be two constables that go out to execute the writ of eviction. Sure. It might make sense if they break the travel to training events and that kind of thing into a different uh, line item rather than lumping it all under travel. Okay. Just a suggestion. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Madam Chair. Thank you. Supervisor Johnson. Uh, just a follow-up question on Supervisor Goulds. Uh, I, I see where sometimes three constables are going to back up one constable <laughs> Wouldn't it make more sense to call the local agency for the backup call instead of us paying mileage from, let's say, Kingman or Bullhead City to Lake Avenue? Thank you, Supervisor Johnson. I had the same concern because a constable is elected to serve in the precinct that they're uh, elected in. And typically, in, uh, in my experience, the constable would uh, call for a backup when necessary from the closest law enforcement agency. So I, I'm not sure why several constables are going out on one call when there's um, a local jurisdiction 
jurisdiction that could do the same thing. And then uh, Constable Cullison assured us that uh, the new computer that he wanted to purchase last meeting was going to save mileage. And then lastly, the COVID-19 uh, situation, I, I would assume that mileage would be down there because of uh, the, the courts cutting back on, on some of their cases. But I don't know, I, I, I think it might be a little premature to, to make this transfer, just my thought. Madam Chair. Supervisor Johnson. Well, one more question for Ms. Lloyd. What you're giving us are guesstimate. So even if the board was to pass this today, we still might have to come back and pull from the contingency. Isn't that correct? No, if you pass this, then we would not have to have them request contingency as long as they remained under this amount. Um, but this action does move basically every penny of their entire budget um, and sort it around between the various line items to get them to balance in, in whole. The only reason that we would need to come back for contingency if this were adopted um, would be if they exceeded these projections. Otherwise, if you hold this and um, vote to not approve it, then we would need to come back with contingency if they exceed these, with their regular um, budgeted amounts. I, I guess that's what I'm saying, and I think we're in agreement. These are projected expenses, just like the budget was a projected expense, which obviously didn't go too well for everybody. So that's what kind of concerns me about doing any kind of moving of money and then having to come back and do it again. That's all, Madam Chair. <sighs> Madam okay. Chair. Supervisor Angus. Uh, I may be mistaken about this, but haven't we been told that all their travel to conferences and training is uh, paid for by the Constables Association. I don't know if, if Mike Cobb is on the phone, if he would be able to answer that if he's on the phone. I'm not entirely sure, Supervisor Angus, that does make sense that they're, that should be covered. Yeah. I can answer that. It, yeah. uh, it's covered by the okay. uh, Constables Association and they use the RIT fee uh, that's collected to reimburse those. So all this is just transportation for their job? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Okay, Supervisor Madam Gold. Chairman, you spoke of a writ fee. Yes. What is a writ fee? When a constable serves a writ of uh, restitution, there's a $5 fee tacked on to that writ for training and, and travel related to training. And that, that goes to the state and then the state Constables Association divvies it out to the various constables throughout the state. Thank you, ma'am. Madam Chair. Supervisor Johnson. Uh, doesn't the constables, when somebody comes in to have a service done, they charge three times the amount of what our set reimbursement rate is for mileage? The, the constables receive, um, our correction, the constables charge a mileage service fee, but if they're taking three constables to do one service, they're not charging the, uh, the person three times that fee. They're only getting the charge for one fee. So um, that's the reason why you try to serve within your own precinct and uh, count on local law enforcement to do those backups. Thank you, because it appears to me that if we're charging three times the amount, we should be making money instead of losing. Yeah, I don't believe that's the case. <laughs> okay, any further discussion? If not, uh, Supervisor Johnson, do you wanna make a motion? Um, I would just let it die for that. no motion. Okay. Anybody else? I'll make an attempt. <clears throat> okay, Supervisor Watson. Thank you, Chairman Bishop. I'd like to move for the approval of the budget transfer from personnel to operational expenses between the constable's accounts uh, for the rest of this fiscal year with the condition that there are no requests for contingency dollars beyond this transfer. I'll second that. 
Okay, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. And I'll be opposed. Motion does pass. Three to two. Okay. Going on to our public hearings. I'll open the public hearing on item 35, discussion of possible action, Ray. Wait, wait, did I forget something? No, we're good. Okay. Uh, discussion on possible action, Ray, adoption of Board of Supervisors Resolution 2020-048, a denial of amendment to the Mojave County General Plan and an amendment to the South Mojave Valley Area Plan for Sessors parcels number 22135017 in the Fort Mojave vicinity. The commission recommended denial five to three. So I do have a request to speak from Brandon Butcher. Brandon, if you could just give us your name, correct pronunciation, and uh, where you live. Uh, yes, Brandon Butcher, uh, 3475 South Bluff Road in Syracuse, Utah. Uh, we're actually asking to overturn the denial um, by the commission, obviously, because we would like to build on there, so we would want to overturn it. And I do apologize, I'm a little tired. We drove through the night to get down here since flights are a little restrictive. <laughs> and we wanted to be safe. So we drove down and got here about seven o'clock this morning. Um, but we would like to overturn the denial and have the approval to the rezoning and the energy overlay if possible to that parcel number, the 22135017. Um, again, project overview is it's for Mojave Electric. Uh, we have the standing executed PPA agreement with them already. This is a system that they specifically designed with us um, that meets the requirements that they need, that has the energy storage requirements that are being set by the state, that utilities need to start having energy storage on hand for the community and everything else, and to move away from um, the gas plants and coal plants that are being used and use more renewable energies. So I'm here if you have any questions or anything else. I know I've spoken with a few of you on the phone about the, the project and what we can do. We've worked with the community, the first location, which in January we were trying to move and cancel that one anyway, because we had just signed the lease on this project in December. So we felt this was a better location since there's already solar west of it. It creates a, an already barrier that's there, so we're farther east and there aren't going to be really any houses since the land farther east of that is commercial and being set up as industrial as well. It just, it falls in line with what the the community was looking at and what the, the zoning commission was looking at. They just, they were a little uneasy with the energy storage. We have moved away from lithium ion to a zinc air battery, which if you guys know anything about batteries, all it is now is the Instead of using lithium as the chemical base, it uses liquid oxygen. So if there's ever any issues, the only thing that ever comes off from it is literally oxygen, that's it. So it uses a zinc powder as the, the storage facility for the energy, which is a lot safer for the community and then you don't have to worry about any kind of spills or toxic gases or anything else that could possibly happen with an overload. Um, we felt it was a better move and it's what the community had asked us to do. So we continually work with the community to find answers and pathways to make sure that this is a project that works for them and is best for the, the area. Okay, does anyone have any questions? <clears throat> Supervisor Watson? Uh, thank you, Chairman Bishop. Uh, thank you for coming down today. Mm -hmm. I know it's a long dive, <coughs> St. George. Uh, <clears throat> this is your second attempt at putting to his program together Correct. and you've moved it to the east yes north and east of the last one north and east and as i recall uh, you're quite a distance away from any residential structures at, the, at this point is that correct yeah it's just around three thousand feet from the nearest building so we we left 90 acres on the south side of the property between any any part of the solar and the nearest house so 
90 acres is a lot of space. It's a lot of land that we're not building on and we left it that way so there's a buffer on the south side and going west of the property, it's almost a half mile to the nearest house. And that's what I recall. Yeah. <clears throat> Thank you very much. Uh, and 3,000 feet is 10 times the requirement for planning and zoning for yes. uh, rebuffing your, your project. Uh, Mojave Electric Co-op has already authorized your, pre your purchase agreement? Correct, yes, it's fully executed. We finished it last August, and then we had a, an addendum that was added to it in January um, just for excess power or anything else. Um, so we oversized the system for energy storage and what they may need in the future. That way we didn't have to rebuild it and they're just gonna purchase all the power from it, so yes. Does this fill out the uh, requirement for Mojave Electric Co-op <clears throat> renewable energy resources, does that bring them to the it number does. that they require or are required to have? Yeah, not just temporarily, it brings them f current for like the next 10 years. So they're gonna be set for the foreseeable future on their the renewables that they need. Uh, and all the power, I know that the, the Zoning Commission asked that all the power that's produced stays in the community. It, it stays right there, it doesn't go anywhere else or anything else that feeds that specific community. Last question. Mm -hmm. The 90 acres that you're using as a buffer will continue to remain to be a buffer and that will not be a part of a build out? Nope, we, we don't have any plans. Mojave Electric doesn't need an additional renewable built there. Their next sector is actually in your sector farther, closer to this area is the next area that they're looking at. So they don't have any plans for the next 20 years to build anything else out there. So we don't have any plans <coughs> to build on it. It would stay as a buffer. Thank you. Supervisor Angus. <clears throat> Thank you. Um, I think Supervisor Watson sort of asked a lot of the questions I wanted to ask, but it can't be said enough that Mojave Electric is thinking ahead and trying to fulfill the obligations, and they've chosen you. Guys, you've been working together. You have a contract. And I think I watched the P&Z meeting twice, and I think that there were some misunderstandings going on. It, it was a split vote, and... Um, We've heard from uh, Tyler Carlson, the CEO of Mojave Electric, and mm -hmm. he has told us unequivocally that you guys are the, are the people he wants to work with, and that's how it's gonna help that entire area that is growing. And some of the issues in PNZ was, you know, about um, that, that is a, a growing residential area. Roger Johnson. Has left the conference. How that would affect um, that growth, but with growth, you need more electricity. So, yes. you know, you can't, you can't get around it. And uh, if it's an area that has already has solar there, um, I see no reason not to approve this. So thank you. No, thank you. And a part of that, I mean, we, we do work really close with Tyler and the, the entire Mojave team that they have over there. And part of that is we, Mojave has done a lot for the, the local school district and the community and to better help with the community and be a part of it instead of just building something and leaving, we're actually going to match everything that they do for school grants and everything else is what our plan is, is to take that and do the same thing. So they offer a school grant, we're gonna do the exact same thing. So everything that they do for the community, we're just gonna double it and, and match it so that we're, we're part of the community instead of just something that came in, built it and left. We don't want that. Okay, Supervisor Gold. Madam, thank you, Madam Chairman. Um, I've been contacted by numerous of my constituents that are in opposition to the project, so I will not be able to support the project. Thank you. Supervisor Johnson. Has joined the conference. Supervisor Johnson, go ahead. No, he is disconnected. Oh, sorry, ma'am, I just got cut off. Oh, okay. All right. Any further discussion? Seeing none, I'll close the public hearing. Thank you very much. Thank you. Do we have any discussion or a motion? I, I actually have another question. Supervisor um, Angus. So when you were doing the, not, not for you. Okay. Oh, okay, so you're going on with the public hearing, is that it? No, the public hearing is closed. Oh, okay. Um, I actually have a question for Chris, if, she, if she's here. Is she on the phone? Chris Ballard? Yeah. Yeah, uh, Madam Chairman, Ms. Angus, I am here. 
Okay, thank you. So when you did the original <clears throat> notice to homeowners, what would have been the amount of homeowners that would have had to have, because um, you, you uh, proposed to approve this, correct? So there wasn't a sufficient amount of homeowners that wrote against it. What was the percentage and how many actually responded that they were against it? Uh, Madam Chairman, Supervisor Angus and the board, um, there was no one within the 300 feet um, yeah. uh, zoning area that um, spoke against it or wrote any letters or any emails against it. Okay, thank you. Madam Chairman. Supervisor Watson. I'd like to make a motion to, I'm not sure which would be the best way to do this. Uh, not recommend the denial. Overturn the denial. Overturn the denial. Thank you. I was, I was reaching for that word and couldn't <laughs> find it. Overturn the denial and approve the request. I'll second that. Okay, we have a motion and second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? No. Okay, motion passes four to one. Going on to item 36. I'd like to open the public hearing. This will be a discussion of possible action, re adoption of Board of Supervisors Resolution 2020 049. A denial of a rezone of assessor's parcel number 2213501017 to allow for solar energy plant and support facilities in the Fort Mojave vicinity. Madam Chair, Supervisor, Ang this is this is part of 35. It's the same parcel. It's the yes. same parcel, right? So. Uh, I move that we overturn. Um, we're in uh, oh. public hearing. Oh, a little premature. I'm sorry, I am way. Okay, we do have a speaker on this. That, okay. that, uh, did you want to come up and speak again, sir? Okay, that being the case, there's no, no one else on the phone. I'll close the public hearing. So, Supervisor Angus, Ready? now you can go. <laughs> uh, I make a motion that we overturn the denial of the um, noticed parcel. And approve, and approve the rezone. I'll second the motion. Okay, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? No. Motion again passes four to one. Okay, going on. To item number 37, I'm going to open the public hearing. This will be a discussion of possible action, re adoption of Board of Supervisors Resolution 2020 50, an evaluation of a request for an amendment to the Mojave County General Plan for Assessor's Parcel Number 22133017 and 002 in the Fort Mojave vicinity. The Commission recommended approval 6 2. Uh, we have no speakers on this one. So I'll close the public hearing and open it up for discussion. Or a motion. Madam Chair, I make a motion to approve item 30, where are we, 37? 37. 37. I'll second the motion. Okay, we have a motion and second. All those in favor <clears throat> say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. But on to item number 38, I'll open the public hearing. This will be a discussion of possible action, re adoption of Board of Supervisors Resolution 2020 051, a rezone of assessor's parcel number 2213002 and 017 to allow for a solar energy plant and support facilities in the Fort Mojave vicinity. I have no speakers on this item. So I'll close the public hearing and open it up for discussion. Madam Chair, motion to approve item 38. I'll second the motion. <clears throat> motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? 
Motion passes. Item number 39, I'll open the public hearing. This will be a discussion on possible action, re adoption of Board of Supervisors Resolution 2020-052, a rezone of a portion of assessors, parcel number 306-49-023, to allow for a horse arena with facilities and to allow for a minor land division in the Golden Valley vicinity. The commission recommended approval by unanimous support. Madam Chair, uh, we do have a speaker that's available only if needed. Okay, I see that. We have Kathy Tackett Hicks that is available if anybody wants to speak to her or I'll entertain a motion. Oh, wait. Does anybody wish to speak to Kathy Tackett Hicks? Okay, that being so, I'll close the public hearing and entertain a motion. Madam Chairman, I'd like to make a motion for the approval of item number 39. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, motion passes. Okay, that's the end of our public hearings. We'll now go on to the regular agenda. Item number 40 this is a discussion, possible action, re adoption of, board of, adoption of Mojave County Ordinance number 2020 02, an amendment to the <clears throat> Mojave County Zoning Ordinance to include section 37.Z special events in order to provide regulations for temporary special events. This was continued uh, from our board meeting on February the 3rd. Okay. Any discussion? Madam Chairman. Supervisor Gold. I have a question for, it's either, I think this is Ryan's more so than Tim. Um, so if you had a political fundraiser at a say a restaurant meeting room that had more than 50 people, would that then qualify as a special event? Uh, probably not. If it's at a restaurant, the restaurant, the rules for the restaurants are going to dictate it. You know, if they, you know, if the occupancy is 200 or whatever, you're going to follow whatever the occupancy for that particular restaurant. Those are, those are, that, the, the rules for the restaurant are going to apply. The zoning stuff and things like that for the restaurant are going to apply. It would be for an event off of the restroom location, I think is really the better oh, okay. question. Okay, so if it was a, it's an existing meeting room that the restaurant rents out to, to groups of more than 50, this would not, our, this new uh, ordinance would not apply? Uh, you still, you would look to where, it, where wherever that building is, is located and, and the zoning, you would look to that. This is for situations where um, it's, not, it's not zoned for that particular area. It'd be out on land. It'd be, you know, somebody's, you know, somebody's um, an event out in Dirt Road or whatever, or out in, out in the um, North Forty or something like that. Um, the Hinderlands. I, yeah, I think it would not because it would fall under the elections ex exception. If you look into there, these do not include, and one of them is for elections. I don't think okay. that it would apply. So, what if it was a garden club? Um, I'd have to look. I don't know if Garden Club's on there. I'd have to. Is it a nonprofit? You'd have to look to see if it fits. I just the pulled Garden Club out of thin air. I was just curious whether this was going to apply to to groups that wanted to have. So if it's a garden club, they might have some tree expert come a special meeting with a tree expert. So it was a non reoccurring issue, but it was in a room that normally holds meetings and at more than fifty people. If 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 you're in a building, if you're in a building that already holds seventy five, two hundred. People, you probably are going to be okay, anyways, because the, it's already been built for that. The occupants, it meets the occupancy criteria, and so forth. So you're going to be okay. What they're trying to gather is those one-off events, you know, where it's bringing in lots and lots of people, and the location is not zoned for that. That's what that's what we're trying to look for. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Any other questions for the attorney? Discussion. Motion. Motion to approve. Second. I have a motion and second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes five to zero. Item number 41, discussion of possible action where I approve an amendment to the revised and restated water interconnection and supply agreement between Mojave County and Griffith Energy LLC to establish revised pro rate share of Griffith's expense for the operation of maintenance and capital reserve replacement of the I-40 
Industrial Corridor Water System in Griffith's expense at 90.1% consistent with the existing agreement. Pro Chris Ballard uh, and Scott Holtry has left the conference. Direct staff to refund lump sum amount in $209,121.56 to Griffith due to the county charging Griffith at a greater than a agreement stipulated pro rate share of 91.3% share for the period of March 16th, 2009 through January 31st, 2019, within 30 days of the approved signed amendment and established the revised pro rate share of Griffith's expense for the operation maintenance cost of the water system and Griffith's expense to replenish the capital reserves replacement fund. Wow, who wrote this? <laughs> okay. I'll open that one up for discussion. Madam Chair, I'll make a motion to approve the amendment. Uh, I wanted to ask a question before water. we got into that. Okay, we have a motion on the floor. Uh, Supervisor Gold, go ahead. Thank you, Madam Chairman. I just want to make sure I have this straight in my mind. So uh, the way that I understand it is that um, we made an agreement with Griffith, with Griffith um, for their share of the, the cost of operating that water system. When we started selling water, had other customers out there, that was supposed to have been reduced, and that never got reduced, so we continued to bill them at the, the higher rate, and eventually it came to a head, and, and the head is now, and we have to go back and, and pay that money back to Griffith. So if somebody could tell me if that's correct or not, that would be swell. Madam, Madam Chairman, that's Supervisor Gould, basically yeah. that's correct. Do we have safeguards in place now so that something like that won't happen again? There was a second, uh, Madam Chairman, Supervisor Gould, there was a second agreement that was actually uh, developed and during the, I, I was public works director until I think it was, I don't know, 2009. And uh, during that interim when we, when Steve took over, there was a lot of the um, institutional knowledge that didn't carry forward. Um, the agreement says what it does, it, it talks about Reevaluating the prorated share of Griffith uh, if additional water was sold. There was a small portion of water that had been sold that uh, wasn't accounted for, and over the course of uh, multiple years, uh, we were uh, under uh, actually overcharging Griffith uh, based on what the previous allocation was. Uh, as for safeguards, uh, you know, um, it, it's a lesson well learned. Uh, the current public works director is fully aware of it and has taken these steps to correct the situation. Um, I'm, uh, we can certainly look at trying to put uh, safeguards or ticklers in place in the file uh, and uh, educate our people a little bit better on um, that if there are any changes to the allocations out there, we end up selling additional water. Uh, then, then the, then the uh, pro rate of share that Griffith will be responsible for changes. Currently, we only have about 80 gallons per minute uh, sure. left. So there's very little water that's that's left out there at the current date. In the future, we are going to have a considerable amount uh, to sell because I believe we've got uh, a thousand gallon per minute well that's um, available to be hooked up to the system when funds are, are uh, identified. It's such a one off it is. agreement, too. So it's hard to, even with a, a, a tickler, I'd have to tickle the word. Griffith Energy or something that yeah, to, get, to get remind you, so that's kind of strange. Thank you, though. Okay. Okay, we have a motion on the floor. Do we have a second? Second. I have a motion and second. All those in favor, say aye. Aye. Opposed? <clears throat> motion carries. Item number 42, be a discussion on possible action. Ray, approve and adopt resolution 2020-054 that resolves Number one, that approval of the submission of projects for consideration in Arizona's 2021 highway safety plan is granted. And number two, that Doug Schuster, the sheriff, is appointed agent for the County of Mojave to conduct all negotiations, execute and submit all documents and any other necessary or desirable instruments in connection with such grant. Motion to approve. Motion to approve. Motion on the floor. Right. Second the motion. Second by Supervisor Watson. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motions approved. 
Item 43, this will be a discussion of possible action ran knowledge receipt of a letter of resignation from County Manager Michael Hendricks effective June 30th, 2020 and approve a recruitment plan for the County Manager position and provide direction for staff to move forward. Nobody Ma wants to make a motion. <laughs> Madam Chairman. <laughs> Supervisor Watson. It was with deep regret to, to receive the letter of resignation from our county manager, Michael Hendricks. For a number of years, he's done a, a great job for Mojave County, and I want to thank him for his leadership and the great job that he's done for all these years. Uh, with that, I'll make a motion to approve and acknowledge the receipt of the letter and approve a recruitment plan for his replacement. <laughs> Okay, we have a motion on the floor. Any other discussion? Yes, can Surprise I, before Rangus. I make the second, begrudgingly, um, I have a lot to say about Mike Hendricks, but um, you're still not leaving until June 30th. So um, I'll have my written book for that day, but we're gonna miss you. And I'll second that. Okay. Any further discussion? Okay, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Oh, a unanimous approval of that resignation letter. We will be sorry to see you go, Mike. We appreciate that your years of service, and uh, you will be missed. So, Madam Chairman, if we could, if we couldn't have got a majority vote of the board, do you see that held <laughs> hostage as an indentured servant? Actually, I already asked that question and was told that we 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 could not. So, <laughs> just a formality that. Uh, we have not been looking forward to. Okay. Uh, Jenny, did we, we did take a vote on that, right? <laughs> okay, we'll go on to the next item then. Um, item number 44, discussion of possible action, Ray, uh, to have IT bring back in our next regular meeting an update on cybersecurity training and a list of employees who did not complete the 2019 training by December 31st, 2019 along with the list of those who have not completed it at all. I think I completed it, but we'll see. Uh, Nathan, did you have something you wanted to uh, bring to the board? Morning, I just wanted to be here Madam Chair. questions. Uh, Supervisor Johnson, we've got Nathan at the podium, but uh, go ahead. Thank you, Madam Chair. Has everybody received the list of the incompleted? Was it was it submitted to the, everybody as backup? I did not see that. <clears throat> okay, then I guess I would make a motion to have IT department bring back these requirements to us. And then my reason for that would be that we set up these tests for all employees to take, and we had a considerable amount of people that did not commit, complete it in time. And it is utmost importance that we have security on our system as it affects everything we do. And we need to show that it is important to the board, and if it's not important to our employees, then we need to reevaluate their position on taking cybersecurity seriously. Okay. So Nathan, can you bring that back to us? I sure will. I'll I can... second his motion with a comment. Go ahead, Supervisor Watson. That even I completed the test. <laughs> Successfully. <laughs> I would We're hope, reviewing that. I would hope that everybody on the board has completed their, their training. But uh, Thank you, Nathan. Okay. We have a, a motion and second. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Motion passes. <coughs> Item number 45, speed discussion, possible action, Ray, to direct staff to obtain a report from the Mojave County Treasurer's Office and the Mojave County Sheriff's Office regarding any uncollected personal property taxes and place it on the May 4th, 2020 agenda. Okay, discussion or a motion? So, um, motion to approve item 44. I'll second motion. Oh, that's the wrong item, it's 45. <laughs> 45. Yeah. 
Okay, we have a motion to Second is for the 45. Then. Item 45, <laughs> seconded by Supervisor Watson. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, going on to item 46. This will be a discussion on possible action, Ray, recent issues, actions, events, and county responses regarding the COVID-19 update as needed. Um, Madam Chair, I'd make a motion to go into executive session. Okay, we have a motion to go into executive session. Do we have a second? I'll second that. And uh, if I could just advise the board just briefly, you know, just a reminder that uh, executive session, there's only limited reasons that you can go into executive session, that uh, the purpose for going into executive session has to meet one of those criteria. And for this instance, it would be f to receive legal advice and counsel pursuant to sections A3 and 4 of the executive session statute. So we have to limit the discussion to receiving advice and information from legal counsel about that. So just so you're aware that that would be the purpose for going into executive session, to receive legal advice and assistance on this item. Thank you, Ryan. And Madam Chairman, just uh, may I verify with the clerk that uh, our uh, uh, video and audio is off? Um, Madam Chair, uh, Manager Hendricks, no, we will need to go into the exec executive section room for this. Thank you very much. Okay, we have a motion to go into executive session, seconded. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay.
You know, we're used to being sort of the stepchild, always screwing things up. I just think it's... Oh, we still have a quorum, so we get started now. Mm -hmm. Your call.
Okay, I'd like to call this meeting back to order and adjourn from the executive session. Supervisor Johnson, are you on the phone? I'm here and ready to make a motion. He says he's here and ready to make a motion. He's talking to you. <laughs> okay, Supervisor Johnson, was that you wanting to make a motion? If you're back in session, nobody else wants to jump in. Yep, we're back in session. Uh, I'm, I'm moved to have three special meetings a week, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, with time set of 1230 for the discussion of COVID-19. These meetings will be by telephone only. Okay. Does that cover it all, Ryan? Yeah, so by telephone only, I mean, if somebody wants to be, if a supervisor want to be here in person, they could. It's just the point was that that the public would be able to watch the meetings and uh, be able to watch the meetings rather than be in person is what I was trying to, what I'm trying to emphasize. Okay. Okay. I'll second the motion. Let's have a motion and a second. Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, motion carries. Madam, Madam Chair, I have a second motion. Uh, Supervisor Johnson, go ahead. Um, I motion to consult with the health director regarding changing the three time set weekly meetings to once a week and bring that back to us. Okay. We have a motion. Mm, motion to discuss. Okay. I hesitate doing this now before we speak to the public health director. I, I wasn't asking to do it now, just have it brought back to us. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So the motion is to have change the meetings uh, being held from three times to one time after consulting with the uh, health director okay. and bring it back to us. Okay. Okay. And we do have a second. And I'll second that. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, that motion passes as well. Okay, anything else before we move on? Uh, Madam Chair. <laughs> Supervisor Johnson. Um, I, I guess for discussion, I would make a motion to make sure that we are releasing age, sex, location of all patients regarding COVID-19. If I may say something to that uh, chairman. Yes. Bishop. Yeah. Uh, the county attorney's office does not recommend passing this motion. Uh, I don't think that, I think the, the way that we are handling it right now is, is the appropriate way as, as was discussed in the executive session. We're not gonna talk about what the details of that, but um, the county attorney's office, we don't recommend that you that you pass this motion. Madam Chair. Supervisor Angus. Ryan, did you say that you had um, spoken to the attorney general's office recently about that? Uh, no, I don't think we talked to the okay, attorney general's so office. Okay, so can we at least get, um, are, can we get a quick, or is it one of those time consuming, where they take a long time to speak to the attorney general's office to clarify that? to actually get an attorney general's opinion on what we're asking it during this crisis period. I think they may have issued one recently. I, I mean, there's been a couple that they've well, issued, um, but in terms of getting a formal opinion, it's unlikely they're gonna do it now, given the current state where everybody's asking them questions and so many things are going on. I doubt that maybe, we'll Maybe we one. can do that through CSA. We could um, ask them to, to find out for us. That's a good solution. That's a good workaround. And we I speak to the that. governor's office every day, pretty much, at the conference call, and I plan to bring that up today as well. Okay, I I'd, I'd recommend that. Sure. Supervisor Johnson. Thank you. I think Supervisor Angus is <coughs> pointing out that the conversation I had with the Attorney General's office, and I can give the contact information because they had no problem with us doing oh. that. Oh, how how did I miss that? Okay. So what's what's your um, your motion again? Uh, 
I guess I would make a motion to release age, sex, and location of all COVID-19 patients after consultation with the Attorney General. That's good. And I'll second Thank that. You. Madam Chairman. Mr. Resigold. Can I get a clarification on the meaning of location? Are we talking about in the hospital or at home and what city they live in, or are we talking about their address? That's a good point because I get questions all the time about, you know, if, is, it, is the Kingman service area, does that include the uh, communities of Meadview and Dolan Springs? Sure. So it, that is. I will, uh, to clarify my position, location would be in the hospital, at home, uh, and city. Second. I think I already seconded it, didn't I? Oh, that's, do we have Madam, to take that back? Madam we, Chairman, there were a couple other issues that were discussed um, also, uh, to, that were discussed, and one of them was uh, uh, relation to previous cases, um, you know, whether they related uh, are associated with previous cases, um, and, uh, um, uh, whether it was associated with travel, you know, m method of uh, mechanism for uh, um, contraction of the of the virus. What's that word they use? Epi epidemi. I can't say. Yeah, so, uh, <laughs> What's the word? Epidemi. Madam Chair, I would amend my motion to include that. <laughs> Okay, thank you. We have an amended motion by we'll Supervisor Johnson. Second. And we have an amended second by Supervisor Angus. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Okay, anything further on this agenda item? If not, moving on to item number 47. Discussion of possible action. Ray approved the adoption of Board of Supervisors Resolution Number 2020-037, endorsing Mojave County's application for a FLAP discretionary grant to obtain up to one million six hundred thousand, inclusive of a county share of at least five point seven percent, to fund the improvement and hard surfacing of Cottonwood Road. So moved. Okay, we have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. A motion and second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Item number 48, discussion of possible action. Ray accept the HAVA fortification sub-grant funds in the amount of 39570 to be used for various cybersecurity related projects. Motion to approve. <coughs> second the motion. A motion and second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. And then item 49, discussion of possible action. Ray, pursuant to ARS 38-431, provide an update and receive legal advice from the legal counsel regarding litigation in Transwestern Pipeline Company. So we did retire into executive session on this. Uh, Mr. Eskimo, is there anything else we need to know before we we, I, I have a proposed motion if you wish to adopt it. Okay. Uh, I'd rec I, the county attorney's office recommends that you, uh, that you approve the attorney general's proposed settlement as discussed in executive session contingent upon uh, approval of all of the counties and Department of Revenue also doing that settlement. Madam Chairman, I'd like to make that motion. Okay. Second. I have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All right. Any opposed? Motion Thank you. passes. Motion to adjourn. I'll second that. All those in favor? Aye. 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 We are adjourned.